Okay, let's open our Bible to Second Corinthians. It has been been reading chapter twelve, and again verses one to ten. I will read. You can follow in your Bible. Can you put New American Standard version? Maybe you can try something different. All right. Boasting is necessary, though it is not profitable. But I will go on to visions and the revelation of the Lord. I know a man in Christ who 14 years ago, whether in the body I do not know, or out of the body I do not know, God knows, such a man was caught up to the third heaven. And I know, and I know how such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I do not know, God knows was caught up into paradise and heard inexpressible words which a man is not permitted to speak. On behalf of such men I will boast, but on my own behalf I will not boast, except in regard to my weaknesses. For if I do wish to boast, I will not be foolish, for I will be speaking the truth, but I refrain from this so that no one will credit me with more than he sees in me or years from me. Because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. Concerning these, I implored to the, implored the Lord three times that it might leave me. And he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, or power is perfected in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, I will rather boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ may dwell in me. Therefore, I am well content with weaknesses, with insults, with distresses, with persecutions, with difficulties for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. May the Lord bless the reading of his word and prepare our hearts to learn from the word of God. So let's pray. Loving Heavenly Father, Almighty God, thank you for your faithfulness, reminding us that the grace he giveth, he giveth, he giveth. When we keep come to our own strength, the end of it, Lord, we can still trust in the grace of God because we simply trusted in our own strength and not on the grace of God. Your grace is beyond our understanding. And we need your grace every day, from morning till we go to sleep, and even at night when we are sleeping, so we can get up in the morning. We thank you for the privilege you have given us to study about grace from 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Reminding to Paul when he prayed three times, my grace is sufficient for you. And truly, Lord, your grace is sufficient for all of us. So as we meditate further on the grace, I commit myself into you and under your hand, Lord. Wash me and cleanse me by your precious blood. I'll be behind the cross. You may be lifted up. Every word uttered, it may come through your Holy Spirit and it may glorify you. And edify all of us, Lord. So bless thy word, it may not go void, but it may bring more of the life of Lord Jesus Christ. So thank you for your faithfulness. Bless thy word in the precious, most worthy name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So as we are studying uh, about the grace, as I reminded you again, that uh, grace, yes, it is needed for our salvation. That's the first thing. Our grace, you have been saved through faith, not of works, and which is very true. Grace is needed for our salvation, but grace is not the end over there. It, it's, it's just the beginning. But grace continues in our life every day. And we thank the Lord that that grace, the riches of his grace, is never going to exhaust. Even in ages to come, the Lord will show us 
the riches of his grace, which is, which is beyond our understanding. And we thank the Lord by this time, every one of us who are in the Bible study understand that grace is very much important in a believer's life. And it's one of the words which is very important, law, grace, redemption, all those things are necessary. And we saw the grace even started from the very beginning, from Adam when he sinned. And it, uh, first word we see in uh, Genesis 6, uh, it talks about no how found grace in the sight of God. And grace continued in the Old Testament, but it became more grace upon grace, which John says in the Gospel of John. So we thank the Lord that we are in the grace period. No doubt the Old Testament believers were also in the grace period, but uh, we are not under the law. And we thank the Lord because the Lord took all our sins upon him and he died for our sins. But that doesn't mean that we can sin. One of the greatest problem with us is that we make mistake, we sin, and all the time we say, Lord, your grace is sufficient for me. And I don't like when people pray, believers pray like that, Lord, your grace, your grace is sufficient. No, grace, by God's grace, we have been saved, we have washed away all our sins. But why don't we pray, Lord, give me grace that I may not sin this again and again. Not that your grace is sufficient, so you will forgive me, you will forgive me, forgive me, but I will continue to do sinning. No, no, don't do that. Because then we are asking the grace of God in vain. Ask the Lord, Lord, this is my weakness. I seen here. Give me grace to overcome it. Not, oh, your grace is sufficient for me. And I'm all right. Again, I will see. And Lord, your grace is sufficient for me. No. I have seen many of believers pray like that. Please don't pray. His grace is always with us. But don't take it in vain. Ask the Lord to overcome things which we have weaknesses by the grace of God. And then we can come and get more grace, that he will give us the strength to overcome all our weaknesses. As Paul, he said, I would boast in my weaknesses because of the grace, sufficient grace of God is with me. So let us go again to the PowerPoint. Please give me to share. And uh, Let me put the pointer, so. All right, so the last time we saw that how by grace you are all saved through faith and not of yourself, it is the gift of God. So this is very much important for salvation, but then we saw that grace is not only needed for salvation. These are the few things which I showed you last time, and I'm not going to repeat, but if you want, you can go on YouTube and look at it. These are just few of them, but we need grace all the time. Now, we also saw three great blessings of grace in Titus chapter 2, 11 to 13. We saw that and we saw the outline of First Peter, God's grace, God's grace, God's grace. And mark here, God's grace and salvation important. God's grace is also needed in submission. If you read Ephesians 5 and 6, it will talk about submission and love and God's grace in suffering. So may God speak with us. So this also, we saw that uh, God's grace is sufficient grace and also it is a strengthening grace. So now we come to this part uh, in uh, God uses suffering to perfect his power. And that we see in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 9b to 10, and I have written down here the verses, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient, sufficient grace for you, and my strength is made perfect in weakness, therefore most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. In verse 10 says, therefore, see, mark the word therefore, because of this verse, he says, therefore, because of his grace, therefore, I take pleasure in five things he's talking about. In infirmities, we will see that in detail a little bit. In infirmities, 
in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So Paul was given a messenger from Satan, a thorn. And these are the thorns which we will see in his life. And we will see all these things in our life also, provided we can say to the Lord, my, your grace is sufficient for me, Lord. And I will always rejoice. So the question was, what benefit did Paul receive because of this suffering? Lord gave all this suffering, but what benefit did he receive? There are two things we can see here. For one thing, he experienced the power of Christ in his life. But strong believers only will go through all that suffering and experience the power of Christ. Otherwise, you will murmur in all these things. But if you love the Lord, if you understand his grace, and you will experience the power of Christ in all your suffering. In his suffering, our suffering. Secondly, something else happened to Paul. He was able to glorify in his infirmities. He could experience the power of God and he was able to glory, able to glory in his infirmities. He glorified the Lord Jesus Christ. Two things. Anything which we do in our life, one thing you do, Lord, how I can glorify you. I believe any circumstances we go through, right, it may be difficult circumstances, it may be uh, circumstances where there is joy or something, always ask, Lord, in these circumstances, how I'm going to glorify you? And the Lord will give you, show you what to do, whereby he may be glorified. And that's what the purpose of Lord Jesus Christ was on this earth. He said, he always said, Lord, I have come to glorify the Father who is in heaven. That was his own main purpose. That was Paul's purpose. And that should be our purpose also. So what benefit did Paul receive from suffering? These are the two ones. Then what made the difference? The grace of God and the glory of God, that made the difference. The grace of God which was upon him and the glory of God which he experienced, that made the difference. And he took pleasure in these trials and problems because he was suffering for the sake of Christ. Remember, it may, it, you know, it may be a small thing uh, to, to tell the truth, not lie, or to, uh, sometimes we lie to escape certain uh, situations. But in that situation, even if you have to suffer, and if we tell the truth for the sake of Christ, we will always glorify him. There are many circumstances it may be in your life, and many times you may have not glorified God. So today we learn this Paul, even in his suffering, he suffered for the sake of Christ, and he was glorifying God by the way he accepted and handled the difficult experience of his life. I believe every believer goes through a difficult experience of life one way or the other. But we thank the Lord as we grow more spiritual, as we become more like Lord Jesus Christ, we always glorify in our difficult experience of life, glorifying God. Uh, there is a God servant, P.T. Forsyth. He wrote, it is greater thing to pray for pain's conversion then it's removal. You remember last time I showed you, we should not, Paul did, was asking for substitution, right? He did not, ah, he did not pray for pay, pay, pain's conversion, but he was saying, Lord, you remove three times. He was asking, Lord, give me substitute something else than the thorn or the messenger of Satan. But then Paul, the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you. And Paul understood that. <clears throat> And that's why he, he did not pray for that, but he knew that this pain's conversion, he will get victory, not substitution, but transformation, transforming his strength, showing the power of Christ in his weakness. That was the transformation he received. And he was glad and he said, I rejoice. I take pleasure, Lord. 
I doesn't matter. I don't take out this thorn from you, Lord. I don't want it anymore. If it's going to glorify you. Yes, I want this pain. I want to go through this. So it is greater thing to pay for pains, conversion, not substitution. That is removal. So Paul won the victory not by substitution, but, but transformation. He discovered the sufficiency of the grace. Let me go to the next one. In this verse, I'm going to show you, you know, Paul, uh, we will see through this. He says, I take pleasure in these five things, in infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecution, in distress, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I'm strong. Five phases of Paul's thorn in the flesh. These are the things which we saw. Now, I just looking at it, and uh, I, infirmities, right? In the Greek word, this is the word, it, and that means lack of strength. Infirmities, he was very weak. Many times he went through painful experience. Maybe he was tired. Maybe he did not have enough food on his journey. Many things, you know, he lacked strength. But he said, Lord, if you are going to give me this thorn, uh, thorn in the flesh, uh, if you're going to give me a messenger of Satan who will put, give me no strength at all, he, he will make me weak. But Lord, I am going to be strong for your sake. I am going to glorify you. So the infirmity, which means a moral, mental, or physical weakness or flaw, that is what infirmity was. And Paul says, Lord, I am going to glorify you. And it is used of utter helplessness in the body. I just left these verses. I'm not going to go through. But in case if you want to go back on the YouTube, you can get it. So the word, Greek word, means all these things. Lack of strength, weakness, infirmity, which means morally, mentally, and physical weakness or flaw. And used also of utter helplessness in the body in that infirmity of the body. Weaknesses of human nature, all these things, infirmities, comes under this Greek word. It's been written in different places. But the same word is used. So when Paul says infirmities, it means all these things. Weakness of human ability. He didn't have ability to do anything. But he glorified God. He knew that the Lord is going to strengthen the power of Jesus Christ will be upon him. Paul's weakness and helplessness before Satan's angel. And that we see in this, in that still he glorified. So that's the first thorn in the flesh infirmity. Second, in reproaches or insults. Another translation says insult. That Greek word is hubris. Also it speaks of hurt or harm. So Paul said whether it is I'm inserted, if I have to go through reproach, if I am hurt, or even if I am harmed, oh Lord, I'm still going to take pleasure in it. Because for Christ's sake, when I am weak, I will always be strong. Because I, I will experience more of your grace. See the power of Christ when Paul went through this. The third one. Necessities, and in this in Greek, it is this word, and it has been translated as necessities. There may be many necessities in his life. And we all know we have some necessities in our life. We lack something and we need something. There are necessities. It may be not for our own pleasure, but we need it. There are necessities. When we go to dis distress, and this is same word is used here, Paul said, even in this, Lord, I'm going to glorify you. Lord, I'm going to experience your power. Lord, I'm going to experience your grace. And the fourth, persecution and diagnosis. That's the word in Greek. And this word, persecution, has been used in all these verses in Greek when it is written in Greek. We remember our New Testament has been translated from Greek language. So, the fifth one, 
distresses is this word, and it also means anguish. So all these things were not like of something in the thorn in the flesh in the body or something, or he had some kind of disease or physically. It was not that. It was all these necessities and uh, it was all these infirmities and reproaches. That was the thorn in the flesh, necessities, persecution. And we also have all this thing in us. But are we taking pleasure in it or are we murmuring? Are we ready taking pleasure for Christ's sake? We are suffering for Christ's sake. Then we can say, Lord, when I'm weak, in all these things, I'll still be strong and I'm glorifying you. So these are the five classes of suffering constitute the buffeting of Paul by an angel of Satan, which was his thorn that we saw in 2 Corinthians 12 and 7. And B, and then it says, I am strong. Paul says, when I get, a, get an attack by angel of Satan, because a messenger of Satan was given. Remember that? He says, when I get an attack by the angel of Satan, then I look for the grace God promised me. Whenever an angel of Satan attacks me, in no matter infirmities or whatever, my distresses or my weakness, Lord, I'm going to look at the grace which you promised me because you said my grace is sufficient for you. I get it. I get your grace and I'm strong in the power of God. In the power of Christ, the rest. I want to mark this word rest upon me. In the Greek word rest is this epi ske no. This is the word. This is the way they, you can uh, uh, pronounce it. Epi Episke no, that means tent upon, figuratively to abide. What the Lord was saying, the power of Christ will be like a tent covering me. Power of Christ in all my weaknesses. It will rest upon me. Oh, what a wonderful way the Lord protects. Like a tent, like a tabernacle. He's going to protect us. Protect Paul and he's going to do that to us. May the Lord remind us wonderful blessings. Now, before I go to that, uh, Paul's thorn in the flesh consisted of all this thing which we saw. And it was not a physical disease. Now, from Paul's experience, what do we learn? Mark all this thing which we will do to from Paul's experience, we may learn several practical lessons, six of them. The spiritual is far more important to the dedicated believer than the physical. Now, remember that physical, we should not ignore the physical because according to the word of God, our bodies are the temple of the spirit of God. So it doesn't mean that we neglect or ignore this body. No. But we should not try to make our bodies an end in themselves. There are God's tool. This physical body is God's tool for accomplishing his work in this world. What God does in developing our Christian character is far more valuable than this physical healing. So the spiritual is far more important to the dedicated belief. That's what we learn from all these verses which we have read from verses 1 to 10. Secondly, God knows how to balance burden and blessings, suffering and glory. God knows how to properly blend all these things to help us. Yes, he knows. He can balance our burdens. But along with the burdens, he will give blessings, suffering and glory. You remember the blessings of him going to third heaven, seeing all the wonderful things and the thorn in the flesh, thorn in the flesh, but it, it brings glory to God. 
then not all sickness is called by sin. You remember Job, all his friends, then physical affliction need not be a barrier to effective Christian service. Paul did not permit his, permit his thorn in the flesh to become a stumbling block in the service of the Lord. So remember, we may have a lot of physical problems, but that should not become a barrier to effective Christian service. But only if you have in your desire this effective Christian service, okay? I see many of the believers, <laughs> this part is not there. Effective Christian service. Yeah, only the Lord's Day service, that's important. But to serve the Lord is not there. And sixthly, we can always rest in God's word. When the Lord said to Paul, Paul, don't ask me anymore. You asked me three times. My grace is sufficient for you. And Paul rested in God's word. My grace is sufficient for you. Yes. Now, I'm going to, this is now, as we already know that we started with grace, which is needed for salvation. And we need grace in many different areas of our life. But now we are coming to that place where Lord said, in his suffering, my grace is sufficient for you. So we are looking of the grace of God in our suffering. That we come to the point where it is written. And I, I have written all these things only for the sake. I'm going to read it. But remember, these are all the deep, deep, deep things which you have to learn. The will of God will never lead you where the grace of God can keep you and the power of God can use you. He will never lead you there where his grace is not there and where his power is not there. He will not lead you there. If he leads you anywhere in your life, remember his grace is with you and the power of God is with you. And that's why he says in 2 Corinthians 2 and 16, and who is sufficient of this thing? Our sufficiency is of God. Yes, our sufficiency is of God. Remember sufficient grace, strengthening grace? Yes, he is there. So Lord will always take you there and he will give grace and power. The grace of God exalts a man without inflating him. You will never become proud. You will never become proud. Become bloated with proud. No. If the God, grace of God exalts a man, he will exalt, but he won't get inflated. He won't become proud. And it humbles a man without debasing. Debasing means coming down. He will exalt him and he will humble him. That's the grace of God. You want the grace of God? Yes, he will exalt you, but you will never be proud. You will become humble. You will not go down because of the grace of God. The Lord gives us grace. Remember every day, whole day, to accept all is dealing with us. No matter what he's going to deal with us for the day, we don't know. Or in the this week or months or years to come, we don't know. But the Lord gives us grace to accept. Remember, accept all is dealing. Unless and unless you accept that grace of God will not work in you. The Lord gives us grace to accept all is dealing with us in the light of his great purpose. Remember, God has a great purpose in everybody's life. Your life, my life. And he's going to accomplish, fulfill his purpose. But if we become an hindrance, he will stop there. And when we humble ourselves and say, Lord, I'm ready to accept, he will continue with his grace and he's going to fulfill his purpose. So that's the great God. Let me... God gave Paul this spectacular revelation. You know, as we read in 
or second, third verses. God gave Paul this spectacular revelation knowing that he was putting Paul at the risk of conceit. Means he knew all this revelation which I have given, I took him to the third paradise, the third heaven. <laughs> it can make Paul proud. It can self-exalt him. And God knew the risk he was taking with Paul. And Paul will have to deal with temptation of pride and conceit in his life. Yes, many times the Lord gives a wonderful revelation through the word of God. But sometimes there may be many pastors or great preachers when they get that great revelation, they boast about it. This is what the Lord has revealed. This is it. They become proud instead of humbling themselves. So sometimes the Lord gives us a revelation just to check whether we'll become proud, whether we'll be conceit. And that's what God gave to Paul. Now, God has at least two ways that he can prevent conceit or pride or self-exaltation in Paul's life on account of that great revelation which he gave in verses 2 and 3. First of all, two ways. Don't give him this revelation. That's the first thing he can do to prevent Paul. If he doesn't give the, he doesn't, don't know anything about what is happening in heaven, so he cannot boast about it. So don't give him. Second, give him plenty. First pain. Either two things the Lord can do. I'll give him plenty of revelation, but at the same time, I will give him pain to remind him not to be proud. That's the two way, even in our life. Either don't give him or give him and give him much pain. I would rather you take plenty and pain, though it's difficult, but that's the great joy. Now, God gave Thorn a messenger of Satan. Remember, we read that to harass Paul. Now, God uses demons or messenger of Satan to undo the design of the father of demons. Now, this is very much important, okay? Don't just pay attention. God uses, you remember Job, God used Satan. Go, try him. And also Peter, Peter failed, but again he rose up. And here yeah, Paul is sending the messenger of Satan. God uses demon to undo the design of the father of demon. God uses Satan to defeat the purposes of Satan. See, undo. What is undo? See, Satan was proud. You remember? And Isaiah 14, 12 to 15, I, 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 I will exalt my throne. I will, I will do this. I will be above God. All this thing. Oh, he was very proud. Satan lifted himself to be above God in these verses. He was proud. And God used master of pride to shame him through Paul. How did he shame? You know, Satan must have said, oh, thank you, Lord, for giving me this Paul, your servant, who you say is great. You gave me, I am going to make him proud now because he has got this revelation. God says, okay, like, Joe, go ahead. But I am going to shame you. You are proud. You are the master of proud. You are the father of being proud. proud. I will shame you through my servant Paul. He will never become proud. And he will shame you. Even though you make him, allow him to do certain things that he may become proud, he will never become proud. I will, sh I will shame you, Satan. And that what God uses demon to undo the design of the father of the demon. God uses Satan to defeat the purpose of Satan. God has his own purpose. You remember we saw God wanted to accomplish his purpose in us? Yes. And whatever the purpose of Satan is that is going to be defeated. It's, and God, Lord used Paul. And by God's grace, my grace is sufficient. My power will be seen in your weaknesses. And Paul never become proud. Satan was defeated. Master of proud. 
you know, we cannot understand why the Lord gave messenger of Satan. But that was the purpose to show Satan that I can undo your problems, your, your pride in myself. So that's the thing. Let me go further. Now, the sum of God's purpose. Now, mark this very well. These are all deeper thoughts I am bringing before you. Okay? So, please pay attention. The sum of God's purpose. What was the sum, sum of God's purpose in Paul's life in giving the messenger of Satan or thorn in the flesh? So, the sum, total sum. Right? Now, sum means like 8 plus 10 is equal to 10. So, the whole thing which came in Paul's life because of Satan, messenger of Satan, and this thorn was what? The sum of God's purpose was not just shame Satan. Oh, yeah, I know, you're Satan, you will be shamed. But that's not the only purpose. Also, his purpose was not only to humble Paul. No, not this two purpose. No, that is not the sum of God's purpose. They are not his ultimate purpose. Lord Jesus says, Paul, this thorn, this messenger of Satan is going to weaken you in such a way that if you have any power, it will have to be the power of my grace. That's important. Paul, it was not, uh, remember that, uh, uh, not to shame Satan and humble Paul, no. Lord was glorified, the power of grace was seen. That was the ultimate purpose to show his grace, sufficient grace, strengthening grace by the power of Christ. That was the ultimate purpose of God. And that's the ultimate purpose of God. See that we don't defeat the power of grace. Remember, as I said, don't say, Lord, your grace is sufficient, your grace is... No, no, that's, that is using the grace of God in vain. But use the power of his grace to overcome all of our weaknesses. Pray, Lord, every day in the morning, Lord, these are my weaknesses. I'm not saying, Lord, your, you, your grace is sufficient for me and I can go on. No, no, no. Give me power of your grace, Lord, that I may overcome. I want that. And through that, you may be glorified. Now, which means that what's going on is not merely granting the unspeakable revelation. What all this thing means? That it's not granting the unspeakable revelation which was given to Paul. And not merely preventing of proud, pride that Paul may become proud. And not merely shaming of Satan. But the perfecting of the manifestation of the power and the grace of God. Lord wants to show his power and his grace in our life. There's all may see us and say, I can see God's grace in him. I can see God's power in him. And that's what happened to Paul. Not only Satan was saved, shamed, not only Paul humbled himself and never become proud, but the ultimate purpose was to manifest the power in the grace of God. Paul sees that. Paul understood what God was thinking of it. What God's purpose was that he understood now that his body and his soul are being made a theater. You know, it was like a theater, open theater to everybody to see his body and his soul going through all these infirmities, five different things which we saw. It became like a theater, open. So he understood now, Paul understood now that his body and his soul are content with weakness, insult, hardship, no matter what, Lord, I am going to show you content, leisure in all these things. For I am weak, I am strong. So Paul is saying, Father, if I may have greater revelation of your glory, Father, if I may have greater revelation of your glory and be, pro and be protected from conceit that is proud, being, being pride or proud, through the pain of this thorn or the saving of Satan's weakness and the glory of Christ's power. Again, let me read. So Paul is saying, Father, if I may have greater revelation of your glory and be protected from conceit through the pain of this thorn 
for the saving of Satan's weakness and the glory of Christ, I am ready to choose this thought. I am ready to choose this thought. I will be most glad and well pleased. Uh, can we say this? I am ready to choose this thought, O oh Lord, if you are going to be glorified. If they are going to see the grace of Christ, I will be most glad and well pleased. Let me go to the next one. Now, let me ask you one thing. If God has not given you one thorn, okay, Paul was given one thorn, but there were many things included in him. If God has not given you, put your name over there, one thorn, but is weaving you a whole crown of thorns, not one thorn, but so many thorns are coming in your life. Will you not pray? Father, if I may get a glimpse of heaven and be saved from pride and expose the ugliness of Satan and magnify the beauty of Christ, then to that end, O oh God, would you grant me the miracle that I be most glad and well pleased? Lord, no matter you give me not one thought, a whole crown of thorns. Father, if you are going to give me a glimpse of heaven, Father, if you are going to save me from pride, Father, you are going to use me to expose the ugliness of Satan. Father, if you are going to use me through this thorn to magnify the beauty of Christ, then to that end, O oh Lord, would you grant me the miracle? that no matter what circumstances or no matter a thorn of crowns, I will be glad and I will be well pleased. Yeah. Think about it. Now, God's design for suffering is that it should magnify Christ's power. God's design for suffering is that it should magnify Christ's worth and power. This is grace. Because the greatest joy of Christian, yours and mine, is to experience Christ magnified in our life. Christ magnified in our life. Living by faith in God's grace means being satisfied with all that God is for us in Jesus. Many strong saints have said, Every significant advance I have ever made in grasping the depth of God's love and growing deep with him has come through suffering. Every strong saints have always 